there. This is Treasure Rescue 21. Hi there. So today I kind of wanted to just pop in and do a quick video on um, this table right here. I have a little bit more of my delicate pieces that I keep on here. And again, there's no rhyme or reason. Um, this is ever changing um, of, you know, as things sell or as uh there gets more room on the um, shelves, um, things move around. But for now, um, these are the things that I have on here that are the most delicate and I don't really wanna like throw them in bins or just put them on the shelves. So I kind of wanted to just go through and show you because all of these items are currently listed on my eBay. Uh, in my eBay store and so you could check out any of these items um, up on there So I'll just start on this side. We have some Fenton and some Murano. So these are a couple of Murano um, Salt and pepper shakers you saw me pick these up in um an estate sale haul so I have these in this uh, Murano bowl and plate set I love how this Murano bowl has a face on it it just the way they do their things are just spectacular like you can definitely tell a Murano piece from a mile away from how intricate they are um, this is a Fenton console set. You also saw me pick this up um, or do it in, another, in a different haul. Um, I also picked this up uh, from an estate sale. It's a hand-painted uh, mirror with these uh, jackrabbits on them and like some flowers. It is signed E. Allen 1985 but I was not able to find anything on that designer, but it is a great, delicate uh, piece. So definitely worthy of being on this table so that it doesn't chip. Um, stuff like this, like these, this cup set, they won't necessarily break because they're very thick and durable, but they take up a lot of space. So I do have a bin where I put my sets of cups in, but there's a lot of delicate cups in there. And because these are so big and heavy and they take up a lot of space, I didn't wanna like put them on top of the other pieces and crush them. So that's why these are here. Um, these uh, cats are actually uh, napkin holders and they're bone china so you can see on here it says fine bone china so these are very very delicate and like any any little tap or anything will definitely break these so that's why i have these right here again this is not a piece that's necessarily fragile but it's big and bulky and there are several pieces that go to the set so i didn't want to risk um having any of the pieces damaged or any of the pieces missing in the bins. Um, for very obvious reasons, these are again are another very delicate piece. You can see the beaks are very thin, um, the legs are very thin, and so these are over here. I have this uh, really cute handmade clay pottery uh, cat mirror. It is signed. Um, it's a little bit more contemporary, but it just, it has a vintage feel and the colors are amazing and cats are very, very popular. So that cat just hangs out over here. Um, I do have this. I didn't know what it was when I picked it up. I thought it was Murano because it has the gold flakes in it. And um, there's even some silver flakes in the fins. This is actually Pier 1 and it is a magnifying glass. So it's very functional. It's very cute. 
and it's from a very reputable brand right now. Um, collectors are actually getting into the more modern um, brands like West Elm, uh, William Sonoma, uh, Pier One, um, what else? Like, you know, brands like that because Pottery Barn, because they're actually replicating a lot of the vintage pieces like Murano and they're doing them very, very well. So, um, a lot of the, a lot of those pieces are actually valued as high as some of the original pieces. Um, this piece was another, um, estate sale piece and it was one of those pieces where I saw it, I didn't know anything about it, but I knew it was good. So I just grabbed it. And then when I got home and did my research, I was correct. So I literally, I, I, I can't remember. It is signed. I can't remember where it's signed. I think that's the signature down at the base. Um, I can't remember if I saw that it was signed or not um, at the estate sale, but I for sure did a Google search and then the same exact one came up. And then that's when I for sure recognized the signature down at the bottom. I literally only paid $6 for this and it is worth closer to $185. Some even go over $250. So that's just an example of when your gut tells you to do something, uh, you just do it. Because um, especially the longer you are in this business, the more your intuition will become stronger and you'll be able to spot those things where you're like, I'm not really sure what that is, but I know it's good. Um, these are ancient. They're called ancient, uh, like Chinese dynasty uh, vases, bud vases. Um, so they're called ancient because they are replicas of really like really ancient vases, but these are antique um, Chinese dynasty vases. They're a pair of them. They always come in a pair. So if you find a single one, it might not do as well for you, but um, if you can find a pair, they do very, very well. They can go from for 150 to $200. Um, and so I have those over here, obviously because of the value. Um, any like thin glass like this, especially if they're a pair, I don't want one pair to get one set, like one cup to get damaged and not the other. So I try to keep them together and in this area. This piece, um, you could just see a lot of uh, things are happening. Um, it doesn't have a very high resale value. It's just, it goes for about 20 to $25, but there's a lot going on and I just wasn't really sure of the delicacy of it. It is porcelain and it is a special edition um, anniversary piece for snow babies. So this character right here is called a snow baby. And if you're a collector of snow babies, you know, um, how crazy this world of snow babies are. There are so many different kinds. And this was a special edition and like a collaborative piece with snow babies. You saw me pick up this piece. Um, again, she has a lot of different pieces sticking out. Um, I was very surprised that there was no chipping on her when I bought her, so I wanted to keep it that way. Um, over here I have some teacups and uh, saucers again very very delicate um, they kind of look scary how they're all set up right now but I promise they're secure and not going anywhere um, I kind of just set these saucers up here so it looks kind of scary but they're not going anywhere and I would rather just have them up here than thrown in a in a basket or a bin back there this is a Bernard, uh, Bernardod, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's by Limoges, France. They're tea lights, and when you put a candle in here, it lights up the scene, and so these are major cities of the world. 
Um, again, like I said, all of these items are on my uh, eBay, in my eBay store. And I do have a picture of this with um, a candle in it so you can see it lit up. It's really, really cool. Um, okay, this piece right here, um, again, it's an antique Majolica. And so Majolica uh, kind of references this um, obscure, like abstract looking, um, shiny porcelain. And it's very, very delicate. So any little ding can chip this up. And it is currently not chipped at all. We're going to keep it that way. And then, of course, this little um, light lamp cover is very very delicate because it's glass so um this is this should be original um but they do do reproductions of these so even if this wasn't original it's still very very delicate and it's part a very important part of the piece so um this one definitely had to be up on this table um just put some stuff back Okay, and then over here, this last section, these are like the most delicate pieces. And so I have them propped up here away from everything else. Um, this piece is very, very unique. It's a little trinket box. Look at the face on here. Again, it's porcelain. It is bisque. And so bisque is a little bit um, more susceptible to chipping like on the surface just because it doesn't have that protected protective layer of um, any glazing and so that one's up here um, I have a lot of my Belique pieces so Belique is an Irish uh, porcelain brand and their porcelain is extremely extremely thin so it is so thin and delicate that um I do know of people who don't mind buying it chipped up. I don't mind buying it chipped up because it is so delicate and so small. And some of the pieces are so old that it's almost impossible for you to buy it in perfect condition. And so if it's like a flea bite, which is just like a very tiny chip that you can only feel with your finger, um, people will still buy it. Um, and so I have all of my belief here. Um, the reason why I don't, have a lot of it is because I actually can't keep it so um the value of Belik goes up and down it is currently going back up right now but even when it was at its lowest I was still selling it very quickly so this is all the Belik I have not because I don't have a lot but because it sells so quickly and I can't keep it so um having just this little section on this table works perfectly this also is Belik um not as delicate um it's a little bit of a newer mark um but it just lives here with the rest of the bleak this is limoges and it is antique so anything over 100 years is considered antique so this is antique very delicate porcelain and um it has this very uh delicate enamel wear and so definitely have to keep this safe and sound um, these are not very delicate uh, or thin. However, they're very, very valuable. This is one of the pe this is one of those things here in the reselling world that it's like, why does this cost so much? This pair is actually two hundred and fifty dollars, and you're probably thinking like they're just some dogs, but that's how it is in this world. Like when something shows up in a TV show or something shows up on a, in a movie. Now everybody wants it, the demand goes up and of course the price goes up. So these are um, Korean. The Japanese ones go for even more and then the English ones go for double and triple that. So um, these Staffordshire uh, Fitz and Floyd dogs go for a lot of money if you can ever find them at a flea market or um, at a garage sale or whatever because they're everywhere you could you definitely need to snag them up I did get these at an estate sale for a little bit higher price But even at that high price I could definitely make money because they go for so much and again You just you ride the wave 
maybe one day nobody will want them anymore and they'll be back down to nothing but um that's just part of the business and you have to just learn what sells and learn what's popular and you'll be you'll do great so um i hope you enjoyed this quick video sorry i didn't show up in it but i thought um, I would change it up and you would want to just see the items that I keep here on the delicate table. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.